Welcome to Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of residential design and construction and demystify the building process so you can become an educated consumer and build your dream home with or without a general contractor. For most people, blanket insulation is the insulation that comes to mind when you think of insulating a home. Most of us have seen attics filled with pink or yellow insulation. That pillowy insulation that we're familiar with is blanket insulation. And in most cases, it's made of fiberglass, which is the most common type of insulation in the United States. But blanket insulation can be made not only of fiberglass, but also of other flexible fibers, such as cotton, mineral wool, and sheep's wool. We'll get into the detail of fiberglass and other blanket insulations in a minute, but first, let's go over this week's pro term. This week's pro term is vapor retarder. A vapor retarder is a vapor resistant material or covering that helps control the amount of moisture passing through insulation and collecting inside walls, ceilings, and floors. Some vapor retarders are more permeable to vapor than others, allowing some movement of moisture. A vapor retarder is called a vapor barrier if it is completely impermeable to moisture. So it totally stops the penetration of moisture. So our pro term for today is vapor retarder. It's a material that partially or completely stops the penetration of moisture. So let's move on to today's mini lesson. Blanket insulation is made of flexible fibers and it comes in bats and rolls. A bat, spelled B A T T, is a pre cut segment of blanket insulation that comes in four foot or eight foot lengths. A roll is exactly what it sounds like it's a long roll of blanket insulation that you have to cut before installing. Rolls come in lengths up to 64 feet long. Most pre-cut bats come in two standard widths. They're around 16 inches wide or around 24 inches wide, allowing them to be easily set into cavities between wall studs. Remember, we learned in episode 16 that in traditional framing, wall studs are placed 16 inches on center and with advanced framing, wall studs are placed 24 inches on center. Blanket insulation is available with or without an outer layer or facing. Facings can be made of craft paper, which is a thin asphalt coating, or foil craft paper, or vinyl. The facing is usually placed on only one side of the insulation, and it acts as a vapor retarder. So, among other places, you want faced insulation to be on your exterior walls. Insulation with a facing also has tabs that can be used to fasten the insulation in place. Unfaced insulation has no facing attached to it. Unfaced insulation is used where a vapor retarder is not needed or when a separate vapor barrier is used, such as in a crawl space. Although a vapor barrier is needed for a crawl space, it's usually provided by a layer of plastic sheeting on the ground. Of all of the types of insulation we'll be talking about in the next few weeks, blanket insulation is the one that is best suited for do-it-yourselfers. However, the maximum R value depends heavily on proper installation. So you may want to leave the installation to the professionals, unless you have previous experience or unless you've done some studying on the subject. If not properly installed, holes and gaps can be left between blanket insulation where air can circulate and condensation can occur, and that will reduce the R value. To evaluate the job of your insulation subcontractor, you should measure the insulation thickness after it's installed to confirm that the insulation thickness you see matches the thickness that's written in your contract. Also check for gaps. Insulation should fit snugly in cavities and corners without gaps, and there should be no air gaps between the insulation and the drywall. Insulation should not be folded or excessively compressed, but it's okay for bats to be split where necessary to fit around wiring and pipes. You want no gaps behind wiring, electrical boxes, or pipes. Now, 
Let's talk specifically about fiberglass insulation. Fiberglass insulation is affordable and widely available. It's non-flammable and resistant to moisture and insect damage. Disadvantages of fiberglass insulation are that it's made mainly from glass fibers, which can irritate your lungs and skin. In addition, most fiberglass insulations contain formaldehyde, although there are some newer versions that are formaldehyde-free. Because fiberglass can be irritating, it's recommended that you wear protective gear if you have to be around during installation. Another disadvantage is that fiberglass bats can settle and sag over time, decreasing its R value. Although fiberglass insulation can be used in most areas of the home, using fiberglass insulation in basements is not the best option because it can contribute to condensation. Thickness of fiberglass bats and rolls range from 3 inches thick to 12 inches thick. It comes in standard and high-density versions. Standard fiberglass insulation has R values ranging between 2.9 and 3.8 per inch. High-density fiberglass insulation has R values between 3.7 and 4.3 per inch. But whether you choose standard or high-density insulation, the thicker the insulation, the greater the R value. Let's move on to cotton insulation. Cotton insulation is sold as unfaced bats or rolls, made with 75 to 85% recycled material. It's made mostly of scraps of fabric left over from manufacturing denim. The R value of cotton insulation ranges from R3.5 to R3.7 per inch, so it's similar to the R value of fiberglass. Cotton insulation has more sound blocking qualities than standard fiberglass, so rooms with cotton insulation may be quieter than those with fiberglass. Unlike fiberglass insulation, cotton insulation contains no fibers that can irritate the skin and lungs, and it contains no formaldehyde. Despite its advantages, many subcontractors have complained that cotton bats and rolls can be difficult to install because they're manufactured in unusual widths. They're usually slightly too wide to fit into standard wall cavities. And because cotton bats are compressed for shipping, they often don't spring back out to match the thickness listed on the label. Another downside of cotton insulation is that it costs twice as much as fiberglass insulation. And as we said before, cotton has an R value that's similar to fiberglass. So you pay more, but you don't get any more insulating capacity. Moving on to mineral wool insulation. I'd never heard of mineral wool insulation before doing research for this podcast. It's similar to fiberglass insulation, but instead of being made with fibers of glass, it's made with either waste products from steel production or from fibers of natural rock. It's sold as unfaced or foil-faced bats or rolls. Mineral wool is known for its sound absorption and it's often used for soundproofing rooms. It also handles high heat well, so it may be a good option for insulating around chimneys. It's fire resistant, and it's sometimes used as a fire barrier. The R value of mineral wool insulation is R3.7 per inch. Like fiberglass, it can irritate the lungs and skin, so protective gear is necessary if you plan on being around during installation. Since fiberglass insulation entered the market, mineral wool insulation is only rarely used as a primary type of insulation in residential construction, so it can be difficult to find. And mineral insulation is moderately expensive. Last on our list today is sheep's wool insulation. Sheep's wool insulation is not commonly used in the typical residential project, but it is a common choice for log or timber-framed homes. Timber-framed homes are framed with large wooden beams instead of typical 2x4 or 2x6 dimensional wood. Sheep's wool insulation is mechanically held together or it's bonded using adhesive. Wool is naturally breathable and it absorbs and releases moisture without losing its insulating properties. Sheep's wool fibers are non-irritating and they contain no formaldehyde, so no special gear is needed for installation. And get this, surprisingly, wool is flame retardant, 
and non-combustible, meaning that if it catches fire, it won't readily burn. Other advantages are that it keeps its shape and doesn't sag or settle over time. Downsides to wool are that wool insulation can be hard to find, especially in the United States, but it can be found more readily in the UK and Australia. Wool is often treated with fungicides, pesticides, and borax, and those residues can be present in the insulation. Well, that's it for our mini lesson on blanket insulation. Let's see how you do on the quiz. Question number one. Blanket insulation is made of all of the following except A. Sheep's wool B. Mineral wool C. Cashmere wool D. Cotton or E. Fiberglass The answer is C. Cashmere wool, otherwise known as cashmere. Cashmere is best suited for sweaters and scarves more than for insulation. It's made of the soft undercoat of goats. Question number two. What are bats? And that's bats, B-A-T-T-S, not B-A-T-S. What are bats? Bats are pre-cut segments of blanket insulation. They come in four foot or eight foot lengths. And can you remember the standard widths of bats? Bats are around 16 inches wide or around 24 inches wide so that they can fit easily into cavities between wall studs. Question number three. What is a disadvantage of fiberglass insulation? A. It's expensive. B. It's irritating to the skin and lungs. C. It's made of harmful rock fibers. Or D. Fiberglass bats are pre-cut into odd widths. The answer is is B. Fiberglass insulation is irritating to the skin and lungs, and therefore protective gear is recommended during installation. Other disadvantages of fiberglass insulation are that it can settle and sag down into the wall cavity over time. That decreases the R value. And sometimes it's made with formaldehyde. Fiberglass insulation is not expensive. It's one of the most affordable insulation options. Fiberglass is made of glass fibers. It's mineral wool that's made of rock fibers. Fiberglass bats come in a standard width of about 16 inches or about 24 inches. But cotton bats are the pre-cut bats that come in odd widths. They're a bit too wide for the standard 16-inch wall cavity. Well, that's all I got for this week. Next week, we'll continue talking about insulation so you can make an informed decision about what insulation is best for your home. If you're a part of a Facebook group that you think would benefit from this podcast, you can share this episode with them by tapping the share icon button. The share icon is at the bottom left of the screen if you're listening in iTunes, or if you're listening from the website, the share icon can be found on the podcast player. And it looks like three little circles within a larger circle. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete and it's subject to change. So it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home. Thank you for listening to me today. I hope you'll join me next week for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. Talk to you later.